Hello, this is just a quick overview of my 2022 Cub Crafters Carbon Cub FX3. I have about 90 hours of flight time on the airplane since I took delivery from the factory at uh, six hours of total flight time. And uh, we'll talk about what this airplane is and how it differs from an older uh, PA-18 Super Cub made by Piper. So uh, to start with, dimensions of the airplane, pretty typical for uh, any Super Cub. It's got a 34 foot three inch wingspan and it uses pretty much the same wing as the old Super Cubs did. It's called a USA 35B modified wing. Uh, so the modified means it might have been tweaked just a little bit by Cub Crafters. And one of the differences on this airplane from the other Carbon Cubs and the PA-18s, it has all metal ailerons and flaps. And these are called the G-Series ailerons and flaps. Uh, because this airplane can fly a little bit faster than the older PA-18s and the other Carbon Cubs, Cub Crafters did, redesigned the airfoil shape and made those flaps and ailerons all metal to give better performance at the higher weights and higher speeds that this airplane can fly at. Fuselage is about 24 feet long in the three-point attitude as you see here. And the engine on the airplane is called a CC363i, CC standing for Cub Crafters. Uh, this engine is basically a Lycoming IO360. It's an experimental engine that is made by Lycoming for Cub Crafters. And it's a four-cylinder, 186 horsepower engine with 9 to 1 compression ratio on the cylinders. Uh, it is fuel injected, which is nice to have in cold weather. You don't have to worry about carburetor icing. And the airplane's driven by a 83 inch hard cell trailblazer propeller. Uh, the Cub Crafters factory does give the option of an 80 inch or an 83 inch propeller, but this is an 83 inch propeller. Landing gear on the airplane, I have 31 inch Alaska bush wheel tires on the main landing gear and the suspension system for the main landing gear is the Acme Aero Generation 3 shock absorber system. I also have safety cables on mine in case there's a mishap. Uh, the landing gear should stay attached to the airplane even if one of these uh, struts breaks off. I also opted as you can see for a belly pod on the airplane. This is a Lou Aero Works belly pod rated at 34 gallons of usable fuel. And that's in addition to the 39 gallons of usable fuel that you have in the wings. So with just fuel on the wings alone, uh, you can fly for 500 miles pretty easily, but the extra 34 gallons in the belly pod brings it up to a uh, comfortable 800 mile range between refueling stops. Gross weight of the airplane is 2,000 pounds, maximum takeoff weight. Uh, empty, it weighs about 1,190 pounds, so a little bit over an 800 pound useful load which is pretty good for a uh, two-place airplane. It can carry quite a bit of cargo in addition to the two people and significant amount of fuel. So tail on the airplane, pretty standard Super Cub tail configuration. Difference between the Carbon Cubs and the old Piper P-18s is that we just have electric stabilizer trim control. So this is a movable stabilizer, meaning the entire stabilizer moves up and down if you actuate the pitch trim. And there's two position rocker switches on each control stick in the cockpit to accomplish pitch trim. Rudder, pretty standard for any Super Cub. And the tail wheel on this airplane is a Scott 3200 tail wheel, except I have an Acme tail wheel shock absorber on this airplane. Uh, this is something we can put on experimental airplanes like this one, because this is an experimental um, airworthy, airworthiness certificate airplane. But I do hear Acme is working on getting these shock absorbers certified for normal part 23 airplanes. Baggage compartments in the airplane include an aft baggage compartment that you see here rated at 60 pounds of cargo capacity. And there's also a main baggage compartment just forward of this that holds an additional 100 pounds. So I have a cargo net on the aft wall of my extended baggage, just have some supplies, uh, some uh, extra engine oil, some window cleaning supplies. I've got a survival kit and some tie down ropes on the floor and a cargo net in the front separating the main baggage area from the aft baggage compartment that you see here. Moving up into the main cabin, we'll start out at the aft part of the airplane. This is the main baggage compartment behind this back seat, again rated for 100 pounds of cargo, and I have some maintenance supplies on my cargo net at the aft part of the main baggage compartment, and some aircraft documentation. Two seats in the airplane, as I mentioned, we've got leather seats in the front and the back, and fully redundant controls in the back seat, including stabilizer trim with this two position rocker switch that you see here, propeller throttle control, and even a push to talk on the upper part of the left cockpit wall. 
moving up to the front seat so we can talk about the avionics a little bit. I opted for what Cub Crafters calls the IFR package in this airplane, meaning I have the G3X system, uh, which includes this 10.5 inch GDU 465 display, a G5 backup instrument, and then the GNC 355 IFR navigator that you see here that functions as my VHF comm radio uh, in addition to the device that I load flight plans and approaches in from. So a uh, very useful system. It's also got the Garmin GFC 500 digital autopilot controlled by this GMC 305 autopilot controller. So the G3X system can do all kinds of things for you. As you see at the moment, I've got a split screens configuration with a PFD on the left, chart on the right, got engine instruments on the right. I can expand those if I tap on it. Now you can see my four probe EGT and CHT indications. I've got my belly pod fuel quantity, my engine fuel flow, my engine fuel pressure. I've also got an in theory shield carbon monoxide detector. So uh, right now, since the engine's not running, zero parts per million, sets off a master warning or master caution over here on the PFD if that exceeds about 10 parts per million. You can go up here to look at electrical indications. Uh, this airplane does have a dual electronic ignition system, so there's no magnetos powering the spark plugs in the engines. And there's a dedicated backup battery for that ignition system in case the alternator and or main battery fails. So what we see here is the main battery voltage. By the way, it does have an EarthX ETX 680C uh, lithium iron battery. So a very lightweight battery, almost 15 pounds of weight savings compared to your normal lead acid battery. It's also got a voltage indication for that ignition backup battery here on bolts too. It's got an ammeter and then the GDU 465 display also has a backup battery. So it'll keep working if the electrical system fails. 13.8 volts on that right now. Coming over to my GNC 355, a lot of functionality here. You can load a flight plan in. You can go to your procedures page. It loads uh, instrument departures, arrivals, and approaches in. And again, it's way I control my VHF comm radio. So there is just one VHF radio in the airplane. Um, all of my IFR capability is based on GPS approaches, but it can do LPV approaches down to minimums as low as 200 feet above field elevation if the airport has approaches designed to accommodate minimums that low. So now we'll take the airplane flying and we'll talk a little bit more about the performance of the airplane. There's a threshold marking you can probably see about uh, 200 feet from where the gravel starts. We're going to try and touch down at that point. A little bit of wind shear there, so we're adding some power, keeping this thing coming down. We're going to see how slow we can, uh, or how short we can stop this thing. Traffic. All right, that's about a 250 foot Those landing. Not to bad. Palmer traffic, go for it. Mike departing runway 16 gravel remaining in the pattern Palmer. All right, I'm going to do a short field takeoff here. We got one notch of flaps in, fuel pumps on, mixtures rich, props forward, stab trim. Set for this, we're going to use our short field takeoff technique. But we're on gravel, so we're going to at least the brakes before we run a full power. I think we'll be in the air in 200 feet. So let's see how it works out. All right, coming into full power. I think we were in the air at 200 feet there. Let it accelerate with one notch of flaps in. About 70 mile per hour on the climb out. There we are. Getting 2,000 feet per minute on the climb. 2,000 feet per minute. That's amazing. Palmer traffic. Cup for Echo Mike. Final runway 16 gravel. Stop and go Palmer. 
Okay, we're at 50 miles per hour. Our wind's dropping off the air, so we lost the airspeed and got that sinker. And we want to be at about 45 on short final as we start to cross the threshold. Really good sinker there, so we're adding power. Okay, there we are at about 46. Okay, that was just a touch over 200 feet, 210 feet, something like that. See if we can take off before the next set of cones, which will be a 200 foot takeoff. So, stab trim coming in, fuel pump still on, props forward. We got one notch of flaps remaining in. Use our short field technique, here we go. Down on the nose. All the traffic monkeys, Emily, whiskey, hold the Yep, definitely off before the first cones there. It's about a 150 foot takeoff. We'll keep that first notch of flaps in, climb out at VY. Let's get out of here, go back to Anchorage.